Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, we're going to be talking all about scan tools. Uh, basically, we have a variety of different scan tools. We're going to talk about, uh, these are all OBD2 scan tools. OBD2 scan tool and the different kind of protocols and how they work with the vehicles. So uh, we're going to work our way all the way down from just a plain Jane code reader up to uh, pretty high level, uh, not quite OEM capabilities, uh, but we'll actually talk about some OEM capabilities also while, uh, while we're here. And so, we're talking from $20 up to about $4,000, and it can go even higher. So let's get into it. So before we get started, uh, let's talk a little bit about OBD2. Uh, what is it? Uh, OBD2 stands for Onboard Diagnostics. The 2 is the second iteration of that. And uh, basically it became industry standard starting in uh, 1996. You will occasionally find a car that's a couple of years older that will have OBD2 on it. And you will occasionally find a car, I think it's mostly trucks, uh, after 96 that are still something older. Uh, the one I can think of right off the top of my head just because I had one was a 97 F250, still had EEC 4. So, um, but generally speaking, 99% of the cars that you're going to get, if it's 96, it's going to have OBD2. Part of the OBD2 process is uh, the way that the codes are listed. So ordinarily, we'll just take, uh, we'll take engine. We'll just be talking about engines for right now. Uh, the, the standard is, will be that there is a letter, and in an engine case it would be a P, and then it would be four digit number. So P, some, you know, number, 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 number. If it's a P0, that is standard across all makes and models. So for instance, if you had a P0301, that's going to be a cylinder one misfire, whether you're working on a Honda, a Toyota, a Ford, a GM, a Chrysler, a Volkswagen, Subaru, whatever. It's always going to be a P301 will always be cylinder one misfire. P stands for powertrain. That's usually anything under the hood or emissions related. Then you have manufacturer specific codes. That's going to be P1 or P2. So an example of that would be in the Ford world, P1135 is actually a throttle position sensor code. P1135 in the Toyota world is Bank One AF sensor. So that's why, where you would need to know uh, what your manufacturer is if you have something super generic like we're about to show you. So um, that's basically all you need to know about OBD. Uh, there's some other stuff about it, but it's not going to help you do anything. So uh, what, what, is, what does OBD do, Joe? So you're driving your car, and you ding, you look down, and you see this little amber check engine light. Some might say service engine soon. And you're thinking, what's going on with my car? So you can get pretty simple, uh, basic scan tools. You can even run to a local parts store. They might even tell you what it is. That's usually what, all they have, um, just to give you a, a number and sometimes a little printout. So uh, let's start talking about scan tools. Basically, they break into two groups. There's unidirectional and there's bidirectional. And what that means is uh, unidirectional is it's able to receive data from the car, but that's it. So you can, you can read data lists and stuff. You can read codes. The only somewhat bidirectional function that it has is you can clear codes. Um, but other than that, you can't, you can't do anything. All you can do is just read what the car is telling you. Bidirectional scan tools, that's where you're, you can actually control things with the scan tools. So if you needed to uh, activate EGR or something, you can do that with a bidirectional scan tool. So this is a Black & Decker smart scan. This is about probably 12 years old, but it's been handy. It's a simple code reader, and it'll even tell you if you have monitors completed. Monitors are basically systems in the car that sort of groups like emissions related, like EVAP, fuel system, EGR. It just tells you if that system's completed, it's ran the test. So this will give you a, some green lights. Uh, a green light if the stuff's completed, red light if something's failed, and there's some other lights. I'm not sure what they do. But this will give you a basic P code, like a P0300, and you can clear and... Uh, you can read codes and clear codes with it, and that's about it. So, 
in a professional setting, does this have any place? For a quick clearing, to quickly clear the check engine light, that's about it. I, I totally agree. Uh, as a professional, uh, I actually use these, I mean, not all the time, but they are handy to have uh, because they're fast. They're uh, way faster than some of the other ones we're going to get to. Uh, a perfect example of a use for this in like a professional setting would be, let's say I had a cylinder head off of a car and I put everything back together. As soon as I go crank the car up, I have a check engine light. A lot of times just that in and of itself will trigger, oh man, I forgot to plug the, the oxygen sensor back in. So you'll go and you'll look and you'll see, oh, yep, I forgot to plug it in. It, it would take five minutes to hook up a regular scan tool just to have something stupid like that go. So uh, there's plenty of times where I'll, if you do something big and you forget to plug it back in, that thing saves a lot of time. Uh, another use for something like that would be if, uh, let's say you had a car come in, it's got a dead misfire, obvious dead misfire. Um, again, you can hook up a regular scan tool, but it's not going to tell you that much more than what, what that little one is. I, really, if I have like a four cylinder and it comes up with a dead misfire, I just all I really want to know is what cylinder's missing. So I'll look at that. Oh, number one. All right. And then I'll start, you know, swapping coils or doing whatever uh, to see to see how that goes. So that that's kind of the use in the professional setting that uh, that, that they would get used for. And it's no battery powered, it runs off the car, so you don't have to worry about keeping it charged, just, just grab and go. All right, up next is, it's a little Matco Tools. I've had this one for about 10 years. It gives you a little bit more information. It is a quick code reader, but also it has live data. So it's very similar to the other one, but it's, you can get into a little more information. You can re read some of the sensors. Um, it gives you, uh, it actually gives you a code description like a P0300 or 301. It, it gives you a little more in-depth detail as to what the code is. The main difference is this one has freeze frame data. Uh, and I don't think we talked about it. Freeze frame data can be very helpful in, uh, diagnosing a car because basically what happens is when the fault sets, the computer will take a snapshot of what all the data that it's watching is. You can also use it to duplicate the conditions. Uh, you can see if what speed it's in, what gear it's in, stuff like that. So it helps you to uh, more easily duplicate the problem if it's, say, an intermittent problem. Uh, this is a Mac Task Pro. This is still uh, unidirectional. Uh, basically, this does everything that the previous ones did. This one, uh, the, it, you can do custom data lists on it, so if, uh, if you were just trying to look at a couple things, uh, you can just pick those and watch the, that data. I honestly don't remember if this will graph. I, I don't think that it will. Um, but uh, the main difference between this one and the previous ones is there are certain tests that you can make a car run without actually using the scan tool to command it on. So uh, a real common thing in the Ford world is uh, key on engine on, or no, key on engine running, key on engine off, uh, where it's going through and it's, it's kind of doing its own thing. Uh, I think you can do like a cylinder deactivation on this. A couple miscellaneous things with it. Uh, there, you, you, can't, uh, you can't go command, say, uh, a purge valve or something on it. But the point being is that uh, basically if the car ECU has a function where it sort of runs its own test, this thing can tell it to run that that test for you. It can't make, it can't manually do anything, but it can tell the computer to run the test for you. So. It's still very limited because these are still very, uh, very minor capable scan tools. So, but and obviously for some minor testing, it works well. So now let's get on to uh, the, the real, the money real, maker, the real McCoy. And with all these scan tools that we have, it's like, do they ever buy anything new? Well, this next one is no different than the last one. It's about 10 years old. 
It's a Maxi Syst Mini made by Altel. It works really well. It is kind of fidgety because it's old, but it does have a lot more capabilities than the last three scan tools. So you can read codes, gives you a lot of data, special functions, and you can even program some keys with this scan tool. So the, the cord that goes to the car, it's wireless, works off of Bluetooth. So it's, uh, it's obviously tablet based, uh, but it does, it does require a battery or it does require it to be charged, which I have a hard time with that myself. To be fair, most of the cars we work on are like 10 years old, so they're, these are just fitting tools for the job. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so this one, this is where, when he was talking about special functions, uh, if you were doing a, let's say you were doing a, uh, for our last video, uh, Prius brake actuator, this has the function to go through and do the, the utility for the bleeding process. Um, if you did uh, timing chains or something on a car and you had to do a cam crank relearn, this will do it. If you needed to do, um, if you, if, if a, like say a Toyota that has its own um, vacuum pump for EVAP, you can tell this to run the test. It'll run, it'll automatically run the test for you. Same thing with uh, if you have an electric air pump, you can make it run the air pump code, the air pump uh, monitor utility for you. So uh, this is where, where this really comes into play is uh, if you had, say, a uh, retarded cam timing code, you can go in with this thing and command, you can go and change the timing, uh, command it to change the timing, and then watch what the, the uh, sensors are telling you that it's doing. Listen for it to stumble and stuff. You could uh, pull the oil control valve out of it, turn it on, watch it, see if it moves, go out there and see if you got power and ground and stuff on it. So um, the, the fact that you're able to command the car to do stuff, uh, that, that's really what starts to save you a lot of time. So up next, this is basically the same thing. Uh, this is uh, just more or less snap-ons equivalent of it. What you'll find is there is no such thing as a scan tool that does everything. I wish. They just don't exist. Um, there are scan tools that will do 99% of what you need them to do, but there is always going to be something that they won't do. Um, even at OEM levels. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but they just don't exist. So that's the reason why we have so many of them, because uh, some of them don't do stuff and other ones do and vice versa. So it's kind of just a matter of uh, guessing, really. Um, cool thing about Snap-on is you can uh, subscribe to a thing called SureTrack and it's surprisingly accurate. Uh, it's a subscription-based thing. You, you can either update your scan tool and it will give you like a year or six months or something every time you update your scan tool, or you can just pay the subscription for it. But what will happen is when you uh, plug it into the car and you get a you know, PO171 Bank One lean code, it'll have like the top five fixes and it'll say, you know, 80% of the time, it's a mass airflow sensor. Um, and these are all verified fixes by like legit, legit techs. Um, I never use that exclusively, but it, it will help you steer you in the right direction. Uh, several other companies do it, but I, I know that I've used it on uh, these two before and it's surprisingly well. Identifix, if you want to sponsor, we'll take it. Yeah, so, Identifix is the same thing. Yeah. And Identifix, you can actually call them and uh, get real support um, with the you know Ford, GM, Chrysler, Honda, Toyota, whatever. Uh, you can get uh, legit guys to help help walk you through problems with that too. So, but anyway, this is the Verdict D7. Uh, it is very capable. It does come with a separate uh, voltmeter, which is also an oscilloscope, so you can get a lot more in depth into electrical issues. Um, this is also outdated. They quit updating it at 2016. So 
it's about eight years out of date, but it still works very well. Even though if it's a newer car, you can still do the basic code reads and get some live data, but not as in-depth if it was updated. But it still works very well. I've had it for about a year, and it, it works for me. So last up in our kind of uh, all-makes-all models showdown, if you will, is uh, basically just a newer version of the previous one. This is the Snap-on Varus Edge. Uh, basically, it does the same things that that one does. Uh, one exception is this one has uh, ports to do the oscilloscope functions. Another cool thing about this one is there's actually an app that's already in it that will show you uh, known good waveforms. So if you had, say, a crank position sensor code or something, uh, you can actually go into the catalog, pick your year, make, model. It will tell you uh, what the connector looks like, the colors of the wires that are there, where to put your probes at, and then give you known good waveforms uh, when, you, when you run your scope. Uh, you don't use that very often, but it is con it's convenient that it's all right there. You don't have to go source the information from various repair manuals and stuff. And my verdict to the previous scan tool has that capability as well. Um, so, so like, yeah, the only difference is this one is integrated and that one is a, a separate. Software is a lot faster. This is a Windows 7, so. so this is still getting old. Uh, you can actually update this one to Windows 10. I, I think I'm going to do it because I also run uh, Toyota TechStream on this, and they no longer make updates for Windows 7. Uh, so I think I'm going to try to take this apart and update it to uh, Windows 10. But this thing's quick. Uh, it's well, I mean, it's not it's not code reader quick, but of the scan tools up here, it's the fastest one that we have, and uh, a lot of functionality. My background's Toyota. It does probably 95%. I know that it won't do smart keys. Uh, it will it will do immobilizer stuff, but it won't do any smart key stuff. And it won't let you do, in, in TechStream, you can go in and do customization so you can change uh, how long like lights stay on and stuff. Nowhere in there is there anything about that. Uh, that's just kind of little piddly stuff. The, the smart key would be nice. I, mean, I wish that they had smart key, but, um, but generally speaking, uh, this will do just about everything that you would need it to do. Let's talk OE level coverage. That's the scan tool that the dealership is going to use to fix your car. They are great to fix that single make and model, and it can do everything that the manufacturer needs to do on that car. You can read for keys, reprogramming computers, updates, uh, everything all our scan tools can do and more, but it is for a single manufacturer. There's several different ways to do this. <clears throat> the Probably the most universal one is uh, J2534. Uh, it's a, it runs through a, a USB. Some, some of them run through Ethernet, but the USB to a laptop computer to like a basic little box. Then that goes to the uh, OBD2 port. And then you would download the OE software from somewhere on the internet, and that's what that that's kind of your interface at that point. Um, the the actual J twenty five thirty four is not all that expensive. Um, there's several different options to choose from, uh, and there's all kind of different packages as far as software goes. You can get it for just BMW, you can get it for just Ford, you can get it for just Chrysler, whatever. Um, or they, there's places that sell package. You can get all Asian cars, you can get all domestic cars, you can get all European cars. Um, so that's that's a, if, if you're if you're like if you own your own shop, you're probably not watching this channel. But if you <laughs> if you if you own your own shop. Uh, that, that's a, a, a thing to, to look into. There are cheaper alternatives that, that we've used with pretty, pretty good luck. So 
you can look online for uh, there's it's made by Drew Technologies. It's called a mongoose cable. You can get it for Nissans. You can get it for Toyotas. I think there's one other one. It might be Honda or something. Uh, you can you can get that. It's it's less expensive than a, a big Mac Daddy scan tool, but it'll give you you can go download the OEM software. You can find it for free online. And you still can't do updates on it unless somebody can just give you a file with it on it or something. But you can do uh, you can program smart keys. You can program regular keys. You can do um, you know handshakes and stuff. You, you can do we. I'll put it to you this way: at work, we have regular tech streams for Toyotas. We have about three or four just running off mongoose cables. They work fine. We reflash with them. I mean, we do all kind of stuff with them. They're they're great. A good it's alternative great. for Ford uh, Ford vehicles is called Forescan. And I am a staunch defender of the Restore the Forescan campaign. Forescan is it still doesn't have every single capability that the OE scan tool. I think it's IDS might be the Ford scan tool, but uh, it is, I'd probably say about 95%. I've used it before. They offered a free trial and, uh, uh, you know, you can buy the cable was about 60 bucks and it worked well. I was able to program some like minor engine stuff. Um, it was actually more of writing the VIN so the ABS module and the computer talked to each other and got all my warning lights off. But it's still not fully capable, but it is very capable. And here's a, a neat thing about Forescan is that it will actually do what even IDS won't do. Let's say that your car didn't come with a factory backup camera, but you bought a factory backup camera and installed it you have to be able to reflash the radio and probably the transmission because you'd be looking for like reverse. Uh, you'd have to be able to tell different computers to, hey, you need to look for this this camera that is installed. IDS won't let you do that. Forescan will. Uh, it'll tell you the digits to go do. You can go in and change certain ones. If you get it, Always, always, always save it before you start changing stuff because you can really mess it up. Um, Even I didn't know that. But uh, it, it's it's real. Forescan. I don't know how they they do it, but it's it's a fantastic alternative and it's very cheap. And if that's something that that you have, if you have a Ford and you have no interest in working on anything else, uh, you just want to be able to do stuff for your own car. Check out YouTube. There's tons of great. Uh, videos about Forescan. And Forescan, perfect uh, sponsor opportunity too, if you want. If you can get past the silly name, I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but uh, that's a great a great alternative too. So um, anyway, uh, I think that is about it. Oh, Joe wanted to talk about phones. With the capabilities of phones and cars nowadays, you can even buy these little. Uh, Con communication device dongles, I guess we could call it. <laughs> Funny word, <laughs> dongle. Um, Forescan. Forescan. <laughs> um, and you can connect to your car and download the app, and you can uh, you can see basic data. Uh, one sort of nifty function about them is a lot of times they'll have settings where you can use your phone as a separate set of gauges. So uh, if you're running like a turbo or something, you can look at uh, AF sensors. You can have it as a boost gauge without having to actually run your own uh, gauge pods or whatever if you, if you wanted to do something like that too. So with our Alltel and the Snap-on, these are not the most expensive scan tools they have to offer. And they, they're getting very close to OE level coverage with, because uh, Alltel and Snap-on will even come with their own J2534 device. So um, I know the Zoo scan tool can potentially program because uh, it's also an internet based or it's a has internet capability is what you need for software and then the also um, the Altel can also come with its own uh, own device so 
they're getting very capable of being able to program. Basically, the, the first three are just pretty easy, quick information. And then if you want to spend the money for more in-depth diagnostic, the other three are, are very capable. These are just what we have. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different scan tools. Just do some research if, if you're looking into one. There, you know, YouTube's full of stuff. Uh, just if you're looking at one online. We know you're here, you know. Yeah, both of you are here and watching and just <laughs> loving the crap out of this video. Thanks for our 27 subscribers. 28. 28. Got one. Um, but, uh, yeah, just go, go do some research and, and kind of figure out what you want to do. These three are, are, are for, because we work on a lot of different, it, to be fair, we don't work on much Euro stuff. We, you I can throw all this away. I hate. I'm just joking on that. I hate European cars. Um, but we just don't really get that many of them. Um, usually Asian, domestic, that, that's kind of what we do. Um, but this, these are kind of, if you're working on all kind of different things, uh, if, if you want to, if you just want to be able to work on your own car, look into something that's like an OE level type thing. Um, most of the time, like with the, with the mongoose cable, it's like five or 600 bucks. That's, that's a third or a fourth of the price of something like this and you'll be able to do pretty much everything. Um, if you're working on your own car and you want a nice scan tool, you can buy one used. Yeah, that's, it, yeah, it that's another thing. They're, they're reasonable. So um, with all that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Like, share, subscribe, let us know what you think. Comment down below. We'll see you on the next one. Little Joe and the Goose. My husband said it, he's been great.